Good morning. Uh, hi, I'm Dave. I'm one of the ministers from Deer and Baptist Church. And uh, I've been kind of thinking quite a lot recently about what church will look like, well, when lockdown is kind of gradually lifted. And of course, we don't know, do we? But um, I don't know about you, but my mind starts thinking, I kind of start pondering and praying about it. And we as a church uh, leadership um, are kind of in, in discussions about um, possibilities with this. And something that I'm doing to uh, get myself ready, I suppose, and prepared for it, and I'd recommend that you do it too, is pray and have a look in God's Word uh, about what church is, what it looks like, what God thinks of it, how it emerged, how it began, where does it come from, all of those kind of things. Have those questions in your mind as you, as you read. And I've been having those questions in my mind as I read. I was recently uh, reading through Matthew, and I, uh, uh, when reading Matthew 16 in particular, I had this kind of idea of, of church in mind, because uh, if you look at verses 13 to 19, it's that um, bit where um, Jesus asks who people think he is. And so let's have a read of that, shall we? When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Peter, the word Peter, it means a stone or pebble or boulder. And Jesus deliberately changes his name from Simon to Peter here. Um, but the word rock that Jesus uses when he says on this rock, well, that means a whole different thing like this large mass of rock, this huge thing, um, basically bedrock, the very ground itself. And you wouldn't build on a pebble, would you, or on a boulder? Well, I wouldn't, but you would build on bedrock. So what is Jesus saying here? Well, traditional Catholic thinking is that Jesus literally meant that Peter will build the church. So the church will begin with Peter and continue from him and his line. And, you know, don't get me wrong, Peter certainly played a huge part in it. But what really is this rock that Jesus is referring to here? Well, in my, my personal understanding is that Actually, it's referring to the truth of what Jesus is saying. That the rock is Jesus, is the Messiah. That is the rock. Jesus is the Messiah. What a rock. But in the Old Testament, God is likened to a rock, or directly called the rock, kind of around about 20 times. And the people in Jesus' day would have known that. The first reference to God as the rock is in Deuteronomy 32. Um, it's in uh, verses 3 and 4. I'll just uh, read that for you. It says, I will proclaim the name of the Lord. I praise the greatness of our God. He is the rock. His works are perfect and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong. Upright and just is he. And this is the beginning of the song of Moses. And so Moses is singing of his experiences of God and knows that God is a rock or the rock. 
And this idea of God as the rock leads to other fantastic truths about him, particularly in the Psalms, Psalm 63 and verse 6. It says this, Truly he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I shall not be shaken. And because God is our rock, we will not be shaken. One of the things about a rock is that it is firm underfoot. Um, I don't know about you, if you've ever crossed a stream using, um, well, rocks, you kind of put your foot out a bit and you kind of test it a bit, and hopefully when you put your foot down on the rock, it's going to be firm. And for those of you that can't see my feet, which is everybody, I'm actually imagining this with my feet, to move my feet. I don't know why I'm doing this, it's not even on film. Anyway, so um, I've been across uh, streams on stones where um, the stones have been quite large and firm, and I know when I put my foot on them, I will not slip and fall in. But there have been other times when I actually have fallen in, and I thought it was firm, but it's just given way under my uh, weight and shifted, and my foot slipped. But Psalm 121 and verse 3 says this, He will not let our foot slip. Isn't that great? And Psalm 40, verse 2 says, He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. You see, God is our rock. And this truth enables us to be unshakable, secure and confident in him. So what does this look like in Jesus? Well, actually, um, Jesus himself is never referred to as a rock. Yet he's the same God. But in our passage from earlier, he is declared as the Messiah. That's what Peter says. The truth of that is so profound and foundational that it is enough to build the church upon and defeat hell. It is the key truth in Christianity that Jesus is the Messiah. He's not a good bloke, someone who did some nice teaching, or um, a great philosopher, or a nice healer. He is the Messiah, the saviour of the world, the one whom through you can be made right with God. Jesus is the way. He's the truth and the life. This rock from the Old Testament is revealed in Christ in the new. So what does that look like in us? You see, Simon is renamed Peter here. It's as if Jesus is saying, you're now a chip off the old block. You are a small version of the big rock. You are a carrier of this profound, life-changing darkness-defeating truth. And if you are a follower of Jesus, you too are a carrier of this truth. You see, he's given us a deposit of himself, which is a guarantee of what is to come. But it's also something for us to pass on to others in our lives, as an example, and in our speech, as people who talk about Jesus to others. There's this great verse in Colossians in which a chap called Epaphras gets mentioned. I don't know if you've ever heard of Epaphras before. Well, you'll find him in Colossians 4 and verse 12. And it says this, Epaphras, who is one of you and a servant of Christ Jesus, sends greetings. He is always wrestling in prayer for you that you may stand firm in all the will of God, mature and fully assured. What a guy. So how does that help us with our thinking about church, the other side of lockdown? Well, at this stage, I think it's simply this. Like Epaphras, let us pray for one another so that we will be able to stand firm on the promises of God, on his truths, on him as our rock, on the truth of God's word, and on Christ himself. It is from this firm standing that we can then emerge ready for what is coming next. And we don't know what tomorrow is going to hold. 
So let us look to the rock, our Lord, our Saviour, who is Christ. Let's do that now, shall we? Let's pray. Father God, mighty King and Lord of all, it is on you we stand, our rock, and therefore we need not fear that our feet will slip because we look to you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are the revealed rock. You are the Messiah. You are the Savior, the Lord, the King, and yet you still call us friends. We praise you and thank you for that. Help us to remember to pray for one another in these times, that we as a church will stand firm in you and be ready for what is to come. For we ask it in your name. Amen. Bye for now.